designing and building a sailing rowboat. Uh, this is a project that I've done three times before, uh, twice for myself years ago, built a design and built a uh, day sailor that my kids and I, my wife, have used for years, almost 30 years now. And then uh, more recently, as everybody was growing up and leaving, I built a, a sailing kayak. We get some chance to show videos of those along the way. <clears throat> and uh, didn't really know what I was doing. I've learned a lot the hard way and been uh, learning from some people who really know what they're doing as well on YouTube. And uh, thought I would try to capture this process uh, and do it, do it right. But also to share uh, the process is something I think anybody can do. So unlike some types of boat building where you need years and years and a lot of money and a lot of space, this is sort of a garage style situation here. We could look around our... Say hi, Dylan. Hey, what's going on? This is a kind of a garage workshop situation that we'll be building in, and a lot of people could do this. And the, the approach to designing and building it is also th something I think that is uh, not as hard as other approaches. So we'll see, see how it goes. And first thing we'll be doing is uh, sort of clearing out the shop and then uh, building what's called a strong bag. Um, that's a place to sort of your reference point that you locate the ribs on and then uh, run, the, run the boat together off of that. But before we look at that, I thought I'd talk about how I've been trying to do designing these things. One of the different things I think is instead of building a kit, I thought it's really been enjoyable to design a boat, learning from other boats, but actually drawing it, making it have the features that I want. And that too I think is something that with a little bit of carpentry skills you can actually learn. So um, this is the plans as they have gotten to at this point. And it's a, sort of a miniature, simplified approach to traditional boat building uh, that I stumbled onto with my first project. In this particular boat, what I'm after is, I actually built one of these for a friend. That was the third boat I built. Uh, Kim and Brian, friends of mine that we do music together as well, said, I want you to build me a sailing rowboat. And so... This design turned out to be in between the big day sailor I built years ago and the little sailing kayak. And when it was done, I wanted to keep it. And uh, so now I'm going to build one and try to record the process. Uh, the features I like, uh, it can be, you can put a little outboard motor on the back of it. It's about 14 feet long. You can use it as a little, just a typical sort of fishing boat with a motor. Uh, there's going to be a seat in the middle uh, for rowing and row locks and oars, but it's also a sailboat, and the, and the design is skewed a little bit towards making it be a good sailboat. And uh, it's a sailboat with a simple rig, uh, what we call a stayless mast. The mast goes in and down into a simple uh, mount without stays, so putting the rig up is really easy. It's got just one uh, sail, the main sail, so you got a main sheet and a halyard, that's all you need. So it's a boat that uh, you can row around in shallow water, a couple of guys can pick it up, it's pretty light, but it's a real sailor. <clears throat> to make it a decent sailboat, one of the things that's a little different than the typical rowboat you'll see, a fair amount of rocker, there's a fair amount of curve along the bottom or the keelson of the boat and as opposed to being sort of flat across here. And that means that it's going to do better at uh, dealing with waves. And also from side to side you can see a little bit on the fore and aft views here there's a fair amount of angle, um, V angle, and there again the ability to ride through waves and uh, resist having them come over the side or over the front, over the bow. Uh, so it's kind of skewed toward being a good sailboat for, for decent waves that way as well. So the approach to, to designing these things is pretty simple. Tape a couple of 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper together. We figured out we're working at a, a 1 inch equals 1 foot scale for most of this. Uh, kind of came late in the game to, to these 
uh, handy scale rulers. Uh, for most of my designing I just use this old thing because one inch to one foot is pretty easy. But the nice thing about this scale ruler is <clears throat> once you get down into fractions that's actually going to be inches. So it, it's real easy to make a brain mistake with the inches feet system when you're trying to calculate a scale. So that is significantly easier than just doing the one-to-one -one in your head. Uh, when I was doing a sail plan, which we'll talk about later, this is actually a one inch to two, or yeah, one inch equal two feet, which is the one-half scale here, and this scale ruler becomes even more helpful to not make a stupid mental error. So uh, laying out this uh, drawing, we got the uh, reference mark, it's 14 feet long. I chose 14 feet because it's a manageable garage sized boat, it won't get too heavy, uh, but it's big enough to, you know, put four or five people in there to, to row around or motor around and, and even in the right condition sail. And then we've got a reference line uh, that we'll use to actually position ribs on the strong back on the reference piece. And we'll see how that works out as the build goes along. It's sort of an arbitrary distance between the bottom of the boat and this reference line. But the boat will ultimately build, be built upside down and that line will actually be represented by a chalk line, a string tightened across there. So these measurements can be directly referenced down from that reference point and translated into the actual ribs. And so you get an idea of how big, how wide this thing's going to be, about four and a half feet wide, and that was taken from just looking at some comparable designs. You want to trade off between stability and speed. And once you get some basic parameters, you start looking at the curves. And uh, once you get some reference points, to connect the curves, you take what a lot of people call a batten, or engineers would call a spline, and just start uh, putting in those reference points. For example, here we want to draw the shear, as it's called, this line across the top, and put in a nail, and pin it. And you want for this, you know, piece of wood that's got pretty even grain, so it's not going to have any inconsistent rates of bending and all that. So you kind of line this line this up where you want it at key points. And then continue that same curve on past the end of your line to make sure you're not introducing unnatural looking flat spots. Some of that stuff, of course, as you get it onto the, actually starting to build it, you can correct it a little bit as you go, but uh, what happens is, if you make one correction in one place and you don't make it, for example, the rate of curve from the side versus the rate of curve from above, you can get an odd looking shape when it comes out in three dimensions. So there's an example. We've kind of made our a nice continuous curve using a batten and we can draw that. And so that's what I've done, experimenting with the amount of space inside the boat. And uh, what traditional boat building ends up doing is taking these sorts of drawings and translating them into a full size layout on the floor of the shop. They call the lofting floor. That's called lofting the boat. <clears throat> and you, you start getting these measurements and making sure they actually all lay out and then you have real size patterns you can cut your pieces to on the lofting floor. I've never done that. We're not going to do it on this boat. But the danger is, <clears throat> you know, the thickness of that pencil line translated to full size may be a quarter of an inch. So uh, you really need to pay attention to the curves if you want the whole thing to come together well. The last step then is to take all of these measurements. So, you know, we figure out based on the curves we want, we figure out that the shear, let's say at this rib, rib number two is going to be, um, I'll just use my old, it's going to be two feet off of the reference line at the shear. 
and you can find all of those measurements at the corner this corner between the side and the bottom is called the chine <clears throat> figure out all those measurements you can then translate that into looking from the stern or from the back of the boat at each reference point and from the bow or the front and then again what you do to make sure you're not missing something and how the boat will look is you again lay a batten across those and make sure that you're actually getting a continuous curve because if it goes like this well then what by the time you actually build the thing something's going to be wrong and what happens is I had a few of these if something was wrong looking from the front so I pulled this measurement down well that means that had to be correspondingly pulled down there or moved in on on this view so you go through a little process, <clears throat> at least in, in a scale version, of making sure as best you can that when this is all done in the real size, you're going to get a set of curves that look good and that it's the right shape and so forth. The other, um, the other thing about <clears throat> the boat we're going to build, this boat is going to use plywood. <clears throat> so traditional boat building, uh, there's a bunch of ways to build a boat. You can, of course, build it out of fiberglass, which takes a lot of chemicals and a lot of infrastructure. Traditionally, boats have been built out of wood where you've got a series of frames and you've got planks running along them. And each one of those planks has to be precision cut and fit, which is really cool. But uh, for a guy like me that has a full-time job and family and everything else going on, this approach of building out of plywood means that you can build it much more quickly. <clears throat> and there's two reasons for that. One is you've only got two pieces instead of planks all the way across the boat. You've got a bottom and a side and another bottom and a side. So four pieces, I guess, technically. But the other thing we're going to do is once we get the, the frames set up, or ribs, some people call them frames or ribs or formers. Once we get those set up on the strong back and run the longitudinals or stringers along these lines and get all that set, we're gonna, it'll be upside down, so if you can envision that, we're gonna put the bottom on first and we'll be able to just trim that piece after it's rough cut near the edge, we'll be able to trim it to that frame instead of having to precision cut it in advance like you do on a stitch and glue kayak, for example. You have to have that piece cut exactly right before you put it all together. With this approach, you get it close, you put it on the frame and you trim the, the bottom off and then the side piece, same deal. You get it close, you put it on and then you trim it off on this face. And so uh, we'll see as we go along that that's actually a relatively straightforward way to get a cool looking boat. And the last thing that's a little different about some boats with this is we're not going to paint it. <clears throat> I've always enjoyed wood and specifically natural finish wood. So we're going to put uh, clear uh, epoxy, thin fiberglass cloth on there that you won't even see to make it really strong and then urethane over it so you'll have a natural wood finish. And so it's a smaller boat. It's something you can design yourself. Put the features in you want, the dimensions you want, and it's going to be relatively easy to build and it's going to be a natural wood finish. And people really enjoy looking at the natural wood boats. Wherever I go sailing mine, people come up and want to talk about them. So I enjoy it and hopefully you will too. And so that's a little introduction to our project. Mm -hmm.